Hi, it's Mickey Dolans here. You're listening to Inspirado Projecto. Here's an epiphany. Life is worth living, and this is life. This is awesome. Here's this interesting synchronicity concerning the new Mad Magazine, number nine, the last and final newsstand episode. Uh, it's so funny. Okay, so here on page... Hmm. I don't... It doesn't have a page. Uh, it says here, You're slathered in sunscreen. The cat has free reign of the house and the car's as loaded as mommy. If you hope to thrive, read Stay Alive, on this family trip, read this nifty how-to from the humor magazine you most associate with vacations. National Lampoons, and that's crossed out, Mads, How to Stay Safe on Summer Vacation. And then it shows all of these different, these funny different things. This is written by Dick DiPartolo and drawn by Pat Moriarty. And then it says a mad public health disservice poster. The reason why I'm, the reason why I'm pointing this out is because, so it says National Lampoons and then it's crossed out and it says Mads, okay? The reason why this is so, so important here uh, or astonishing at the very least is back, oh gosh, when was it? It was a few months ago, a few months ago. Yachtly Crew did a show for this, uh, what do they call it, a private event out in Arizona near Tucson. No, where was that? Hmm. Somewhere in Arizona. And it was like a big tennis thing. And there was supposed to be a, you know, it was a big... What do they call much much to do is that what they call it whoever they are and it was really cool if you look through the instagram page the inspirato projecto instagram page if you thumb back through that you'll see a picture uh, you'll see a video of the of the delorean i think i also put up a picture of so there were there were some like uh what do they call them airstreams Airstreams. If you know what that is, it kind of looks like a toaster, like a, it's like a silver toaster and you hook it up to the back of your car and you go out and you, you go camping in these things. So they had some of these old Airstreams and we were using the Airstreams to change in. And it was really cool because they had, they had the Back to the Future car. They also had the, uh, (laughs) they also had the National Lampoon's, uh, National Lampoon's car, the Griswold's station wagon there with all the luggage piled on top and everything. And, uh, so I think that, I think I have that up on the, uh, up, up, up on the site. Now, while we were in there getting dressed in the, uh, or yeah, in there getting dressed in the, in the Airstream, Baba Bui says, oh yeah, the same company wants to hire us for another event. And it's going to be sponsored by National Lampoon. And I flipped out. I'm like, no, no, dude, no, no. And I was just, I was so loud and surprised and I was just blown away, blown away. And then he goes, no, 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 Mad Magazine. I'm like, wait, what? Huh? Wait, what? And it was at that point I realized that they were completely joking with me because they know that these are two near and dear things to my heart, National Lampoon and, and Mad. So now here we go. The final issue of Mad, at least on the newsstands, it's still going to be available by subscription and also in comic book shops. So have no fear. Um... I have no fear. What I love about this is that they put some black and white. They're putting some old, old material in here, which is great. Like this old folding out, out over here on the back. 
Man, Al Jaffe is so good at this. From what I've understood, he's always done this by, by uh, just by sight. Just by sight, he, he paints the thing. And he doesn't know how it's going to look until, until uh, it goes into the Mad Magazine and then you fold it. So Mad Magazine used to be black and white. And, uh, and then later on, as time went on, they started making them color. And then they started putting ads in there, too. Um, from what I see so far, because Mad never used to have, never used to have, uh, ad advertisements in there. This latest Mad has no advertisements in it. I haven't seen any advertisement. What's equally funny about this, here's another synchronicity. On page, oh, there are pages, page 13. Cartoon scenes we'd like to see. And, uh, it's a bunch of guys, you know, Bluto and whoever the other guy was, Bruno, Bruno and Bluto, running over to Popeye, this corn cob pipe. He pulls out his spinach, but he, he's holding it upside down and when he squashes it out, it doesn't fly up and then into his mouth like you see in the cartoon and they're all beating him up. Sergio Aragonis did this one. What did he? Yeah. Do they still do the little guys in the in the margins? Oh yeah, they do. Little bits. Yeah, they do. Okay, I'm so happy to see that. Yeah, good, 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 good. So what's interesting about this particular Popeye thing was that someone on Twitter yesterday. Um someone on Twitter yesterday said, it's so interesting that Popeye's doesn't have a side of spinach. And then I said, yeah. And they, then they stopped providing corn cob pipes in the kids' meals, too. So it's funny because that was before I got this magazine. I mean, this is really, so the first, so the first parts of these pages are all black and white. It's beautiful. I love, Man Magazine is just great in, in its black and white glory. And what's so cool here, at the end of this one cartoon, right, right before the Popeye one, there's this one where it's a, it's a, um, it's called The Lighter Side Of, which was originally made by Dave Berg, and they still put him in here. Now it's done by uh, Tammy Golden and John Adams, or at least in this one. So what's so cool is, so it says down here, Seeing Red. There's a little boy in front of a TV watching Flintstones. It's all black and white here. Daddy, can we please get a color TV? The neighbor's kids have one. And the father, he's reading a newspaper. Does it matter if it's in black and white or color? It's the same show either way. And then he goes, oh, please, can we please, please? And then it says, the next day, and there's the father with his arm on the TV. He goes, okay, here's your darn color TV. Ready? He's, he's got a new TV. Kid is going, yahoo, switch it on, daddy. Bam. Next panel. Whoa, Wilma Flintstone has, whoa, Wilma Flintstone was a redhead this whole time? Hubba, hubba. And then the kid goes, yuck. So it's funny because the father, his face, his face and beard are in color. Everything behind him is black and white. And then there's the TV that's in color. And what's so interesting is that the very next page, that's where we see Popeye and everything's in color. This is a really, these guys... So they did a clever little sort of morphing in, into the color thing. Man. It's just so cool. It's so cool to see these flashbacks. Hold on, let's go listen to uh, Oliver and Doc. Let's go see. Hi. 
What are your thoughts? Hmm? What are your thoughts? You're not going to talk anymore? Hmm? You're not going to talk anymore? Mad Magazine, they taught me so much through the years growing up. That was one of my big dreams, drawing for Mad Magazine. I loved the parodies in there. That was my first, and I didn't realize it then, because I didn't have a name for it, but that, that, that was my first, uh, what's the word? My first experience with caricatures. I didn't know that was the word back then. But, um, gosh, they were so good. All right. Uh, we'll talk more later. Thanks for listening to Inspirato Projecto. thinking about that homeless guy that I talked about in the last episode. And I really hope that those paramedics and those folks actually took him somewhere to help him out. I hope they I hope they helped him out with his ailments I mean, like I said, the guy's face was, it looked like it was kind of bloody and just, I mean, not, not in good shape at all. Like pieces of his skin were missing and an amputee left leg was missing and he was just face down on the ground, kind of muttering and, So I hope they really helped him. And I, I've been thinking about this. And Dolores Cannon, through her, through her explorations in, um, in uh, past life regressions, one of the things that she talks about is that every one of us, not she, she doesn't talk about it, but through all of the, uh, I mean, it's a common consensus among these various people that she takes through the past life regression, various folks who live in in different places um when you start seeing these kind of commonalities you can't help but kind of pay attention and keep your eyes keep your eyes on you know and your ears open and you go hmm this is it's quite interesting this is something to consider one of the things that they talk about is that we choose the parents that we're going to have. We choose the life that we're going to live. And and we even choose how we're going to die. And 
some some spirits choose to inhabit a body that is like the fella that we were just talking about. Some people, uh, some some spirits dip their foot in. This this is one of the reasons for the miscarriages. They just kind of want to dip their foot in real quick. Um, and each of these bodies that they end up inhabiting, you know, they might choose to, to they go, okay, I'm going to be this, you know, sort of uh, dismembered, or not dismembered, this this uh, handicapped, maybe? Maybe that's the right word. Disfigured person. I'm going to choose to be that. The quadriplegic. You know, each of these question marks that we look at. And we might think, why would the universe allow for this to happen? Well, if we look at it from the point of view of these spirits. Imagine if you're a spirit and you have no body, no, you're just floating around, you're floating around. Uh, in, in, or, you know, in order to feel the sensations that a human feels in this experience, you actually got, you have to go into their shoes directly. It's like, uh, I don't know, you can't explore a rainforest from far away necessarily. You you know, you got to be in it. You got to be in there. And so based on whatever, whatever body that a spirit chooses to inhabit, they are there to help other people learn lessons about themselves. The main thing it keeps going back to is that we are here to, to learn the best versions of ourselves, to become the best versions of, of ourselves, to you know remember who we who we are, where we came from. And there's a lot to be said for becoming this particular body and and teaching everyone around it. What happens with quadriplegics and such? It teaches the people around them a lot about compassion but helping others. So, it's it's an interesting dichotomy looking at these situations from, from these various perspectives. And then obviously it's just how we want to choose what what to do with that information. What did that guy, what did that homeless guy teach me yesterday? To, or, and, or, and or continue to teach me. Well, that oh. um, what it teach me? What it teach me? That I don't ever want to be in that position. Um, that I'm going to do the best I can in staying healthy, connecting myself with people that I know, love, and trust, people I can vouch for, people who vouch for me, and just keeping that going like that, keeping that, keeping that moving and grooving. And, um, so... I know for sure 
that if I have at the forefront of my mind, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to just um, allow my outside circumstances to dictate where my heart wants to go and what my heart wants to do. If, if I am not going to put those limitations on, I gain so much more. Do you have people in your life who might need assistance or help in major ways, let's just say? Do you have people in your life like that? If so, feel free to email me at inspiratoprojecto at gmail.com and, you know, leave an audio message. If you just want to type it out, I'll read it on here. If you want to call the hotline, you can leave that on the voicemail too. 561-203. 9179er. The voicemail is open. Give it a shot. I'm very curious. You know what, you guys, you filmmakers out there who decided to put it all out there on the table and go, this is the dream I have here, this is what I'm following. Hey, troops, hey, tribe, let's let's whip it up into shape. Let's all dream in this dream together. Let's all let's all put our energy, all our good vibes, all our excitement, our joy, yada yada yada. Words, words, words. <laughs> let's just keep keep on dreaming this into reality. And the fact that you're able to conjure up all those people, the cast, the crew, the catering. <laughs> All the help, the funding, getting it all together. Man, I applaud you. And I cannot wait to screen your films at Kapow Intergalactic Film Festival. Thank you so much for giving us a chance and for submitting to kapowiff.com. Man, I have been coming across such wonderful stuff and I cannot wait to screen it September 13th through the 19th, 2019 at NoHo 7 in North Hollywood, California. Here's a question. Are you aware of how your language affects your life, your environment, the people around you, uh, and your future? Are you aware that every word you say is a spell you're casting? These are things I must say out loud to myself. So I can keep into that mindset. I know on this podcast, sometimes I point out the things that irk me. And my mission is, my intention is not necessarily to I, I don't, I, my mission is not so everybody knows what my opinion is. I don't know if it, it comes across that way or not. My mission here, my intention, is to help open up some eyes, help open up some minds, help reveal what's going on behind the curtains and you know, help folks to tune into the best versions of themselves to become, you know, their greatest selves. And uh, to just no- notice stuff. I think uh, because I don't watch mainstream news, commercials for that matter, Uh, I, I, 
you know, because I'm kind of investigating usually the fringe of life, the fringe of the universe. That enables me to see what's going on from this outside perspective, not to mention the various teachers that I read, that I watch videos of, the folks who point out to us I just came across, uh, there's a little argument here. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Some ladies are out here in front arguing. What do you do in these situations? Do you enter? Do you enter the middle of the discussion? What can I do here? The one girl's door is all smashed up, messed up. The other lady apparently smashed into her door as she was driving past. Now they're all trying to deal with, oof, insurance things. Man. This is, this is where, you know, being aware of your surroundings, being cautious, taking into consideration things, various things, uh, comes, comes handy. Can you hear this? The other lady drive away? Man, you know. Just be aware of your surroundings. One of the great things I learned in driver's ed is that if you're getting out of your car, so you're parked, getting out of your car, before you open the door, look to see if there's a car coming up behind you or not. Look to see if, you know, your surrounding area is safe enough for you to exit. When I moved out to California, when I moved out to California, I noticed a lot of folks just whoop, whipping open their doors, whipping them open. You know, you, tell, you can tell that they just parked and now they're about to get out and go where they're going. Yet they're not looking. And there have been a few times where I, I almost took off someone's door. Um, or maybe their door is already open. And I go slower and I'm trying to go around it. But the person is totally unaware that there's a car coming towards them. And they're just going, Zip. They, they just get, go right out. I don't know if this stuff is taught out here in driver's ed in California. I don't know if that stuff is taught and all the driver's heads, I'm just taking, you know, uh, examples from what <clears throat> I learned in my driver's ed. There's something they taught us called the IPD process. Have you ever heard of this? IPD, I-P-D, wait, I-P, IPD, I-P-D-E. I think that's what it was. Uh, IPD process. What was it? Something... Yes, something, and then predict, decide, execute. What was the I? Predict, decide, IPD process. Let's see. Yeah, there it is, IPD process. Okay. Oh, is it identify? Maybe that's what it was. Identify. Yeah, identify, predict, decide, execute. Identify, predict, decide, execute. So if you're driving through an area that is a residential area, 
there might be some families living there. There might be a child running out into the, into the street, chasing a ball, chasing a Frisbee, chasing their dog. There might be dogs in the neighborhood. There might be cats in the neighborhood. So you identify the surroundings. Look where we're at. Predict. Okay. There is a slight possibility that I might see a kid come running around the corner. There's a slight possibility that I might see someone's uh, dog or cat come bolting out in the street. And... So you predict that. Identify, predict, decide, and execute. So then you decide, okay, I predicted that this might happen. What am I going to do? I'm going to decide to go slower. And I'm not talking about being paranoid or worried or all that stuff. Just, just you know, it's like a, like a computer. Okay, identify, predict, decide, execute. So then when you decide, I'm going to slow down. I think I'm going to slow down. Execute. That's where you slow down. <laughs> and uh, so this situation, you know, there's on the street, there are cars parked on the street. Rather narrow. It's a rather narrow street. You can park cars on either side of the street. Sometimes people come whizzing around this corner. And you don't know what's on the other side. Zip, zip around that corner. You don't know. You don't know if someone's going to be backing out of a spot, you know, anything. You don't know. And uh, apparently I had just arrived moments after um, some girl. It looked like she had, she, from what I was looking at here, um, two girls that were in the car were, you know, parked. And they were, I think they opened the door and a lady who was driving down the street went, and smashed into the door. And so that's, as, as one can imagine, that's not ideal. <laughs> it's not ideal. So, and I'm not laughing at these people. I'm laughing at the absurdity that I just said it's not ideal, because of course it's not ideal. So, Be careful, folks. Please be safe. Please be safe. Not in a paranoiac way. Just be safe. Just, you know, be aware of your surroundings. Look around, look around, look around all the time. Look around, look around, look around all the time. This is what I do in the grocery stores. This is what I do when I'm on the sidewalk. I anticipate. I use the IPTI process. A lot of times when we're setting up gear on, on the stages... I kind of predict what, you know, what direction someone might be walking in or whatnot. Um, and, you know, you would think that if, that if everybody is tuned into that and aware of that, rather than, let's say, if there was a mindset that came from a mindset of, you know, me, 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 every man for himself, me, 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 I go first, me, 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 me then you're, you're going to get some disharmony in that thing. Yet when you've got everybody tuned in, working together to make this happen, it all unfolds. It can be easy. It can be effortless. Um, and plus it enhances your awareness, which is the other excellent thing. It's like a superpower. So please be safe, folks. Please be safe. I just realized how much podcasting is the wave of the future. The more we influence the idea of mobile podcasting, I cannot tell you all how many riches, all of the riches, all of the, all of the wonderful things that have come my way because I've, I've dared to just talk to people out there in the world. And, and what's so beautiful is like this, this is the thing that ties it together because we keep hearing about people going complaining. Oh, they're always in their screens. They're always in their screens. Well... What if they were in their screen? Oh, they're always in their screens. They're always in their screens. They're not out there talking to the pub- public anymore. They're not out there c- communicating. Well, this could, this could enable uh, an introvert to get out of their shell. This could enable a, a comic book geek, uh, uh, 
um, you know, a, uh, anyone who's interested in just meeting new people, um, it can enable them to break through. Because I've I found all kinds of interesting people. Because I broke through it, I'm, I use the podcast as as a, a, a way to basically, you know, go look. That just breaks the ice right there. Look, you have something to promote, and I want to. I want to broadcast vibes of 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 good material uh good vibes of good material great vibes extraordinary vibes of extraordinary material i want to keep blasting that out there and so it enables me to find people like craig spivak uh blythe baines zoe mclean Josh Eisenstadt, Rob Broski, uh, so many of these just talking to folks uh, on a su- oh Sma, who used to work at the bakery, but I used to stop by before K Chung. She was a uh, member on the show. Uh, she was on the show. Oh, Wizard of L.A. I mean, all these interesting people. Had I not. You know, if I had the, I was able to just capture that and document that for my future. I think what what really helps is when you when you put it in the perspective of wanting to collect this information for your future self and for your the future generations, uh, um, and something for you to reference back on in the future. Become your own entertainment. Wherever you go, there you are. So become your own entertainment. Um, there's this awesome. Check this out. I just I just uh, I was telling Jenny about this and she told me she's seen this before. I think this is beautiful. Now listen. This is by a, a woman named Anne Lamott. And you've probably seen us seen this on Instagram. I think it's beautiful. I think it's phenomenal. What if you wake up someday and you're 65 or 75 and you never got your memoir or novel written or you didn't go swimming? In warm pools and oceans all those years because your thighs were jiggly and you had a nice, big, comfortable tummy. Or you were just so strung out on perfectionism and people-pleasing that you forgot to have a big, juicy, creative life of imagination and radical silliness and staring off into space. Like when you were a kid, it's going to break your heart. Don't let this happen. That is so, 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 so imperative. There's this book. I haven't read it in a while. Uh, Some of you out there may have read this. I read it every year for a couple of years. My brother told me that he would read it every couple of years. It's called Boy's Life by Robert R. McCammon. And this is kind of like a stand by me kind of book. It's freaking, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. So there's this there's this piece in here that is so This is just, oh man, when I first read this, oh my god. Whoa, interesting. Wow, this is crazy because this is describing the, okay. I wanted to set, this is from page eight from Robert McCammon, Boy's Life. I wanted to set my memories down on paper where I can hold them. You know, I, I do believe in magic. I was born and raised in a magic time, in a magic town, among magicians. Almost everybody else didn't realize we lived in that web of magic, connected by the silver filaments of chance and circumstance. But I knew it all along. When I was 12 years old, the world was my magic lantern, and by its green spirit glow, I saw the past, the 
present and into the future. You probably did too, you just don't recall it. See, this is my opinion. We all start out knowing magic. We are born with whirlwinds, forest fires, and comets inside us. We are born able to sing to birds and read the clouds and see our destiny in grains of sand. But then we get the magic educated right out of our souls. We get it churched out, spanked out, washed out, and combed out. We get it put on the straight and narrow and told to be responsible, to act our age, to grow up for God's sake. And you know, why were we told that? Because the people doing the telling were afraid of our wildness and youth and because the magic we knew made them ashamed and sad of what they'd allowed to wither in themselves. After you go away, so far away from it though, you can't really get it back. You can have seconds of it, just seconds of knowing and remembering. When people get weepy at movies, it's because in that dark theater, the golden pool of magic is touched just briefly. Then they come out into the hard sun of logic and reason again, and it dries up, and they're left feeling a little heart sad and not knowing why. When a song stirs a memory, when motes of dust turning in a shaft of light takes your attention from the world, when you listen to a train passing on a track at night in the distance and wonder where it might be going, you step beyond who you are and where you are. For the briefest of instants, you have stepped into the magic realm. That's what I believe. The truth of life is that every year we get farther away from the essence that is born within us. We get shouldered with burdens, some of them good, some of them not so good. Things happen to us, loved ones die. People get in wrecks and get crippled. People lose their way for one reason or another. It's not hard to do in this world of crazy mazes. Life itself does its best to take that memory of magic away from us. You don't know what's happening until one day you feel you've lost something, but you're not sure what it is. It's like smiling at a pretty girl and she calls you sir. It just happens. These memories of who I was where I lived are important to me. They make up a large part of who I'm going to be when my journey winds down. I need the memory of magic. If I'm ever going to conjure magic again, I need to know and remember. And I want to tell you. I had this idea of a movie called Let Me Return to Silence and it's this person who tries to do whatever they can to just, you know, maybe they have a hard time sleeping maybe they have a hard time having solitude they have a hard time just being by themselves getting away just kind of being alone to really you know, I think it's important for us to be in solitude in some respects to really see what are our own decisions and what decisions are we making based on the opinions of outside forces until we get to form a very close relationship with our own intuition we It'll get harder and harder to identify what is a sign that is leading us towards our destiny, towards the intended reality we so joyously would love to have unfold for this particular reality uh, avatar. Let me return to silence. So, I'm thinking maybe maybe the guy, uh, maybe he ends up just going out to, like for instance, my buddy Jeff and his uh, girlfriend Heidi, they moved out to Joshua Tree, which I just recently learned is a uh, vortex. Uh, well, it's a, it's a vortex in itself. Meanwhile, as I was thinking about that, 
um, another spiritual, I'm not even going to say, uh, friend of mine. Well, I think by the time you hear this, it's okay. She'll be out of there. Amika Jane. She was on the radio. Amika Jane. Amika Jane. She was on the radio. And, uh, <coughs> Amika Jane was on the radio. And uh, she's actually out in Sedona right now, which is like, that's buzzing, 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 that place. Not to mention the various other vortexes, vortices that you can travel to. So she said she's going to a vortex. It's just, wow. Just incredible. Just incredible. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Um, I'm going to get back to uh, more of this Kapow stuff, but thanks for listening. This is an incredible story. Just came through the pike, through the pike, as they say. It's brought a projecto hotline. If you want to call up 561-203-9179, please feel free to send us your particular ideas, crazy stories, synchronicities, dreams, etc., etc., and so forth. Call us on Jupiter. This is from Craig Spivak comedy buddy who I met on a subway on my way to go jam with my buddy Lawrence August, my fellow songwriting partner, I Gonzo. And uh, Craig called in with this crazy synchronicity. Craig, thank you so much for, you know, he was telling me that he, he listens to this while he's, while he's out there in the world driving around doing what he does best, exploring Los Angeles and dispersing comedy to the masses in his own unique way. He's fast, he's quick, he's a good improv guy. He comes up with stuff quick. I keep telling him he'd have an entire DVD very fast if he just just let it all blast, blast it. Let it through. (laughs) So this is a crazy story you're going to hear. Uh, I encourage all of you to call up and and uh, contribute just as equally extraordinary stories. Thank you, Craig. By the way, if you're in Los Angeles, look up Craig Spivak. He's, he's at all these different open mics all the time, traveling all over the place. So he's also got a podcast on here, Craig Spivak. If you want to follow him on Instagram, go to C S P I V E K. It's on Instagram at C S P I V E K. Craig Spivak. Here we go. Hey, Kurt. It's Craig. Um, I'm not going to do a voice. Yeah, I'll do this later. Uh, when you hear this story, give me a call anyway on your private line. Let's talk off. Talk off. Call me on yourself. But I'll tell you this story that happened yesterday. Uh, every day I work out. I go to a park. I run. I'm exhausted. It's sweaty. And, uh, and then I go. I drive across the street. And I usually just sweat it out there. And I get a coffee or something. So I cross the street in my car. And it's a mini mall. It's like one of those outdoor mini mall things, right? So there's a coffee bean and an outback steakhouse and all this shit, whatever. And the, you know, in, in these in these outdoor mini malls that are really expansive, they have piped in music, right? And it's a music that's subscribed. It's a subscription service of music, and it's usually terrible. It's usually top forty shit. It's not really anything that I'm into or what have you. And um, I can hear it. And I'm parked in my car. And I say, okay, I'm exhausted. And I, I have to go home and shower. But I need to go over to the REI, which is in this mini mall, to price uh, new shoes. 
because my running shoes are, are falling apart. So I drive, you know, politely in the mini mall parking lot about five miles per hour to drive over to the REI. And my window is open and I can hear the music that is being played. And I can't hear the exact song or whatever, but I remember thinking in my head, if I swear to you, I don't know if it was my voice or just a voice. And it was saying, well, Craig, uh, in order to be here, you have to like Uncle Cracker. You have to like Uncle Cracker, Craig. If you don't like Uncle Cracker, you don't belong here. It kept, it kept saying that sentence over and over again. Uncle Cracker, Craig. If you don't like the band, Uncle Cracker, you can't be here. Now, I thought, I, you know, I'm doing comedy. I'm trying to come up with riffs or whatever. And I, I figured, oh, well, this is the kind of music that would be played on on, on mini mall subscription radio, right? The Uncle Cracker stuff. Oh, but you you know, that, that song came out like 15, 10, 20 years ago. I, I think it's crap. I, I hate it. But, I mean, it's listenable, so it stays in your head. You know what I mean? It's listenable crap. I don't know how else to describe that. It's not my cup of tea, but I remember it. Maybe I don't hate it. Maybe that's why I remember it. This is part two. So, I'm in, I'm in the mini mall parking lot, right? A song has come on that reminded me of Uncle Cracker. It wasn't, but it was just sort of the feel of Uncle Cracker. And there's a voice in my head saying, in order to be here, you have to like Uncle Cracker, Craig. So you'd better like Uncle Cracker. I don't know what to make of this. I go into the REI. I do my biz. I come home. I sleep. I have an open mic to attend. I go to this open mic in Burbank. It's in a bar called the Over Under. It's on Bur uh, San Fernando. I go to this open mic with Abby. She's a friend. She's uh, a great comic as well. And I do my set, and it's in front of about 12, 15 people. And some bits hit, some don't. So the bits that hit were, were good. It felt good. I was, you know, felt all right. But the bits that didn't, I was like, oh, this is embarrassing. And there was cute chicks there and stuff. And I'm like, oh, I just bombed in front of cute chicks or whatever. But there were cute chicks who were laughing. And I was like, well, it's good to get them laughing. And I kind of realized, well, I probably don't have much in common with these women or anything like that. But it's nice to know that I was making them laugh. It's nice to know that I perhaps maybe they even found me attractive, which is great. You know, you want that. So I'm in this sort of frustrated, hit and miss, plus or minus sort of state of mind. And I walk out to the bar. And I already have my tab open. Bart felt duty to me and Abby coming in because she was treating us like broke comics. She didn't really attend to us. But I have money. I have a credit card. And I put, you know, I had a tab open. So this time around for the refill, I get to the bar. And she's there. She realizes I have money, I suppose. And she's attentive. So she's nicer. I'm standing at the bar. And the Uncle Cracker song comes on the PA system. Don't know what you said in bed. And the voice comes back in my head. And it says, if you want to succeed here, Craig, you'd better like Uncle Cracker. You like Uncle Cracker. I look at the bartender. She's cute. She's attractive. She's smiling at me. I don't really like her that much, but she is attractive. And I look at her and I say, you got to love Uncle Cracker. She smiles. She's nothing but sugar from that moment on. I ended up spending 65 bucks on booze that night. The shows went well. Good good open mic. That's all I got for now. I'll do more uh, voices and shit. You listen to Inspirato Projecto. Here's your fun fact. A cat's heart beats twice as fast as a human heart, 110 to 140 beats a minute. Stay tuned to Inspirato Projecto for more fun facts. I just had this uh, this idea for a Christmas Christmas movie called Cats a Claws, C A T S A C L A W S, and uh, he's an Italian Santa who's also a cat. And so he hands out pasta, a lot of pasta. Uh, 
And he go and instead of ho ho ho, he says, meow meow meow. You know, or meow meow meow. Oh, that's how he, that that's how he laughs. Meow 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 like that. Hardy, big belly. Oh, maybe he's like a Garfield looking kind of cat. Yeah yeah yeah, big fat Garfield cat. Um, cats are claws. leave you with this. This is something I found. The biggest wastes of time we regret when we get older. Not asking for help. Trying to make bad relationships work. Dwelling on your mistakes and shortcomings. Worrying too much about other people. So, if these are any things that you find yourself struggling with right now at this current moment in time, uh, don't, don't, don't carry all that stuff around with you until you're lying on your deathbed going, oh, why did I do that? Why didn't, why didn't I experiment? Why didn't I follow my heart? Just do it. Just give it a try. Thanks. <laughs>